Wednesday, April 6, 2016 Town Council meeting. We begin, as always, with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> um, first off, welcome to the new town councilor, Cal Bowden. Uh, welcome you. to this motley crew. Uh, Thank you. Look forward to working with you. Uh, last year, we did uh, last week, last meeting, we did not we postponed the election of officers because one of the councilors was not present. So we will have that now. So I will accept uh, nominations. Nominations. Is that the right word. Yep. Nominations for chair. Just before yeah. we go that, um, when we vote, I'm going to do like we did in the past and ask each council if there's more than one nominee to state their preference. And the council with the most votes that way will become chair instead of having a motion to second. Uh, Councilor Thompson. Um, I will vote to nominate Gary Levy. Do we need a second? Yeah. Is there a second? Second. Councilor Weinstein. Uh, I just wanted to say that as the council, um, I think that we've had a good year and um, we've started to tackle some big issues. Um, as we've done that, I think that the chair has um, really set the tone for conversation and has, um, it's been steady um, and there's been a level of professionalism that I've appreciated. So with that, I um, nominate Phil Nazaro. Is there a second? Second. Councilor Pike. Uh, no need. Any other nominations? Uh, so you want preference? Yeah, so I'm going to go around the room and just, you can state the last name of the candidate you, you prefer. The last name? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Councilor Burns. Uh, Councilor Nazaro. Councilor Bowden. Councilor Nazaro. Councilor Pike. Councilor Levy. Councilor Thompson. Councilor Weinstein. Councilor Nazaro. Councilor Levy. Levy. Councilor Nazaro. Uh, Councilor Levy. Uh, Councilor Levy wins. You are now the chair, Mr. Levy. Um, Would you like to come sit here? Keep the seats. Does you can that? just do that today. Yeah, you can take that seat right now. But he's, yeah, the person, it's on you now. Yep. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> do I have a nomination for uh, vice chair? Any? Councilor Thompson. I would like to nominate Dale Pike for vice. Do I have a second? Second. Councilor Burns. I'd like to nominate Councilor Nazaro. Do I have a second? Second. second. Oh. <laughs> Jump in. <laughs> hmm? Am I the first person now? No. <laughs> <laughs> The chair is the last person. All right. So. I'm not the chair. No. No, uh, no, no it should, jump over. Yeah. Okay. should it go? Well, actually, it would go with. It goes that way. So after Phil wines. should vote before me, most right. probably. Exactly. Okay. I'll let you call the rule. Say, same thing. Council Burns. Councilor Nazaro. Council Bowden. Councilor Nazaro. Councilor Pike. Councilor Pike. Councilor Thompson. Councilor <laughs> Pike. Councilor Weinstein. Uh, Nazaro. Councillor Nazaro. I didn't expect this, but I'll say, Naz I'll say Nazaro. <laughs> Councillor Levy. Okay, so it's three to three. Correct. Um, is that what it is? No, it's no. four to two. Oh. Okay, so it's four to two. Nazaro. In, okay, so based on that, I guess Councillor Nazaro. It's, it's, hey. it's over. Um, by the way, I didn't say anything at the time, but I'd like to thank Phil um, for. Um, his professionalism this year and I think the council is working very well together and I I certainly hope um, to continue um, with discussion and an open meeting um, as uh, we've had the last I think few years so thank you very much Phil. Well, thank you for your time um, that being said do I have a motion to adopt the town council rules for 2016-17 so moved does anybody have question or second. Oh, I'm sorry excuse me does anyone have questions concerns any changes that have come up 
Now, just, just so I'm clear, Steve, we're going to vote on all the um, positions now. That's one of the changes we made last year, That's correct? correct? Okay. So everybody's aware of that, and we're going to do that. Um, right after this. Okay. So if there's nothing else, call the roll, please. Councilor Burns. Aye. Councilor Bowden. Aye. Councilor Pike. Aye. Councilor Thompson. Aye. Councilor Weinstein. Aye. Councilor Nazaro. Aye. Councilor Levy. Aye. Motion passes 7-0. So should we start off? I don't have the, I, I apologize, I didn't have the list because I didn't know it's right there. Oh. Uh, sheet of paper to your right. Oh, that's right. So just going in order, if that's, uh, do, we don't have to go with budget committee or your planning cause anymore because it really doesn't matter. Okay. So we have uh, the McKellen Dam Committee, and currently serving is Councilor Pike, and that was his request. So do we, are we going to go around and vote on every one of these, Steve? Is that, is that the new deal? It does say the council appoints, so. Okay. Do you need a motion and a second for, I mean, for each one? If we, don't yeah. have a, if we don't have an issue, just for sake of asking, it's not that I mind, but if, if everybody's okay with it, can we just, uh, uh, unless there's a concern, can we can just go with it? can do consensus, yeah. Okay, because I think that might yes. save some time. Uh, do we have a consensus on Councilor Pike serving on the McKellen? Is anyone um, fast and furious wanting to be on that committee other than Councilor Pike? I think Dale has, or Councilor Pike has done an excellent job on the McKellen Dam yeah. committee and probably understands it more than anyone else. So, <laughs> we, <agree. the> <laughs> so we're unanimous on that. Okay. And highway safety, we have <clears throat> in the past, just for the record, Larry Pickering or Councilor Pickering and um, uh, Councilor Nazaro, or Vice Chair Nazaro. Uh, Amy Thompson uh, has her name in. Is there a consensus that that will be appropriate for everyone? Good. Um, next is budget committee. We should probably vote on budget and planning just because it's always sort of been that way. Um, budget committee, <coughs> excuse me, last year was Councilor Thompson and Councilor Weinstein was an alternate. This year, uh, Councilor Weinstein wants her name in, but there is no alternate, so we're going to have to make that. Oh, did, did you want to do that? I can. I'm just thinking about it. An alternate, I could probably do okay. scheduling it up as an alternate. Yeah, I okay, could so we'll put that in. Time. Okay, do we have a consensus on council? Actually, uh, that one you need yeah, a we'll, 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 we'll so vote. We'll vote around. Um, do I have a motion to accept Councilor Weinstein for Budget Committee? So moved. Do I Second. Have yep. Do you want to do a friendly amendment to include Council Thompson as the alternate? So we'll do one motion, one vote. Okay. Do we have to officially I'm say that, that or nope, is it okay? That's okay. That's <laughs> we'll, we'll, we friendly amendment at that? <laughs> okay. Um, please call the roll. Councilor Burns. Aye. Councilor Bowden. Aye. Councilor Pike. Aye. Councilor Thompson. Aye. Councilor Weinstein. Aye. Councilor Nazaro. Aye. Councilor Levy. Aye. Motion passes 7-0. Uh, next we have the cable franchise renegotiations that's been going on now for two years. So I guess my name's been there, but <laughs> there's been no cable renegotiations. So we are I'll starting. I'll stay year. on it if yeah. anybody wants to take it. It's theirs, but it's it's uh, basically um, when they come in and uh, you know all I want is uh, closed captioning and um, some on demand. That would be that would make me happy with a few mm -hmm. extra bucks from them. But that's me. Does anybody else want that? Just so we're clear. So we have a consensus on that, okay. And CIP committee last year, uh, it was Councilor Weinstein. Um, Kyle Bowden has his name in. Is there a consensus and on? Councilor I put my name in, but given that I'm now somewhat unexpectedly vice chair, yeah. I will uh, I will defer to Kyle or to Councilor Bowden. Okay. Um, do we have a consensus on that? Congratulations. Thank you. It's a great um, committee. Uh, conservation uh, Commission uh, last year it was Councillor Burns I don't see a request so um, no, I wanted to try something else this year <laughs> I, I, I see um, well um, based on that is there anyone else that's interested in conservation? Let, let's, let me propose that we'll see how it goes. I mean, uh, 
I'm I you know I'm already on the dam committee. Uh, I I'm on a subcommittee with the with the planning board, and you know they were some were hinting that they'd hope I'd stay on, but I I'm fine with Councillor Burns being on the planning committee instead. I don't know if I'm fine if people want to vote on that one. I I really you know I'm, I'm I'm fine however it works out. But if I'm not on the planning committee, I wouldn't mind being on the conservation committee. But if I'm on the planning committee. I'd rather not be on the conservation committee. So, if you want to switch the order and do planning board next, that could determine what. Okay. Does well, that do make you, sense? Do you have a preference? Well, I just feel like I'm in the middle. Of some, you know, I'm on a subcommittee with a planning board. So, you know, I, I, but I'm not trying to hog the committees either. So, that's. Uh, I, I, I okay. So, what do you want to just call the role on the plan? Do you want to do the just a quick yeah. statutorily? You don't need to have a member on the conservation commission it's it's more of a liaison position between the two bodies but they do do, do they do expend them? they do expend some money here and there don't they, do. they? Mm -hmm. yeah and there were, there was a lot of um, you know mm -hmm. turtle talk and stuff like that um, turtle signs signs yeah. <laughs> um, what's your back up <laughs> spring is here <laughs> So, tell you what, why don't we hold off on that and go to planning, and then we'll do EDC and get back to conservation. How's that sound? So, um, do I have a motion? Just for the record, Dale Pike, Councilor Pike, has uh, been on the planning board, and I, as he said, I think they're in the middle of a few things right now, I'm assuming. Um, I've been the alternate, and we have. Uh, Councillor Pike Burns and I was putting my name in as an alternate because I didn't know what was going on. So, so does someone want to make a motion for Councillor Pike and then for Burns and then go around? I mean, I think that's kind of a question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, I'm sorry, I should ask you the no, question. Uh, I mean, if we already have two people that are going for the primary, should it just should they be the primary and alternate? Like whoever comes in second becomes the alternate. I think that's fine because I was going to remove my name. Yeah, before we had like no, we only yeah. had one person who wanted to do it last year. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. I mean, that would make sense. That's fine. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Okay. So, um, do we we still need to make a motion? Correct. Uh, do I have a motion for Councilor Pike? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Do I have a motion for Councilor Burns? Do I have a second? Second. <laughs> Question? Do you have a, you look? That was from second. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know if there was a. Okay. Do the same as for chair and vice chair, state your preference as we go around. Um, Councilor Burns. Councilor Burns. Councilor Bowden. Councilor Burns. Councilor Pike. Councilor Pike. <coughs> Councilor Pike. Pike. Councilor Weinstein. Councilor Burns. Councilor Nazaro. With all due respect to Councilor Pike, Councilor Burns. Councilor Levy. And, and, and this is nothing against uh, Councilor Burns, not that I have no, to qualify <laughs> it, but I think since they are in, in, in the middle of so many things, I think it would be appropriate to, um, to, to have Councilor Pike continue in the planning. Councilor Burns is the full member. Councilor Pike is the alternate. And jumping back to, um, well, we, we can do EDC. So I had my name in for EDC. I've been on it for the last two and a half, three years. Um, and Councillor Burns wants, wants it as well. I don't have a problem. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't have a problem. Do we need two? There's, there's, two only, seats. there's only one seat now. Well, oh, you, right. you amended right. it to one seat. Oh, you used to have so, two. Right. Just for the record, I yeah. wanted to continue with two, but that's okay. Um, while we're talking about EDC, just briefly, Steve, did we, did we cut the committee back to seven and actually choose the seven members? Yes. We did. Yes. Okay, because I wasn't sure that we actually voted. Are you absolutely positive on that? Yes. I remember we changed. Yes, because it was vacancies. You eliminated some of the seats. No, I know we. I yeah. know we voted to go from what was it, eleven to seven? Yes. But I don't remember the seven members. Just for the record, I don't remember. I don't have it in front of me, but yes, we did. Okay. She voted on some. Yeah. yeah. Well, based on that. Um, 
If Councillor if Councillor Burns wants to be on the EDC, um, I would agree. You know, I, we're coming to the. The only reason I really wanted to be on it was because we're coming to the head. That was the only committee I was going to be on. But um, if that is your choice, I would be happy to defer. Um, honestly, I had it down as like either or. So, um, you know, I gave a couple of choices there for committees when I sent in my preferences. So <laughs> can we have a can we have a um, alternate? Yep. If the council wants one. Yeah. And and if we have an alternate. Because as when I was the alternate on planning last year, um, you know, I was allowed to go to the meetings and discuss certain things, particularly when they were doing the, um, because it, a lot of it had to do with the EDC when they were re rewriting the um, master plan. Um, if Councillor Burns was the alternate, because there's no big votes coming up now, I think now we're just mm -hmm. into, infor right. into mm -hmm. information. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then we're going to meet with the planning board. Mm -hmm. If if uh, Councilor Burns is an alternate, you can come to the meetings right. and participate. Sure. So that's fine. It's fine. You know, I could go either way if you're satisfied with that. If we have a consensus, is that okay with everybody? Okay. You got that, Steve? Yep. And now we're back to conservation. Mm -hmm. does, does anybody want to? So I'm not on a committee right now. I'm not sure that's the right oh. committee for me. Just frankly, like it's nothing against conservation. I just, I like, I'm not sure my skill set lies within it. You got a beef with conservation? No, I really don't have a beef with conservation. Stretch and grow. You know, when you see a turtle crossing the street, <laughs> when you take that, I, you could put me on. I'll, I'll be on conservation. What do they meet, Steve? Is it once a month or once, once every? A month, is it once a month? Yeah, it's like the. Is it the first or second Thursday of the month? Second. What's okay. not in here is that I'm the chair of the Veterans Memorial Trust, right. which is the reason that I held back a bit. Right. But. Um, I'm sorry, can I ask a question? Did we, when I was looking at this, did we have an alternate for the highway safety? No. No. We usually didn't have this many alternates, but I. Right. I just thought I saw that, that somewhere. Okay. Yeah. yeah, please. That came up because um, the counselor at the time, like I said, he wasn't sure he was going to be able to make the meetings. Ah, gotcha. So there was okay. an alternate put in okay. place. And actually, this year with, with it was the Ben Away meetings. project coming on and whatnot, I, it's going to actually, I think, meet because they never used to meet very often. I think that was one of the. It meets on things. as need be, needed. Wasn't basis. it highway safety? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, if, there's a, it's if there's like a if there's an issue, right? Stuff. If there's a review of a stop sign or a speed limit, the highway safety committee meets and reviews the plans. So yeah, mm -hmm. but they'll probably be involved when we get when the Ben Away thing gets going right a little bit. Won't they be brought up to speed on? No? No, that goes right to the council. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought it's more review. The engineering, it might make sense. Like the last time they met when I was on it was when they wanted to change the direction of Church Street, which right. might have been before you. It was before me. Yeah. My God, that's five years ago. Yeah. yeah. We years met ago. last year to discuss um, parking, and that was a brief discussion. So that was it. Okay. Well, I'm not going to, we don't have to get into it now, but it might not be a bad idea when, when they do uh, get into the engineering for the sidewalk, maybe just to keep them abreast mm -hmm. so they can, you know, otherwise they won't have any meetings, <laughs> you know. Um, and just in, in <clears throat> finality on this, um, so, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, Mr. Administrator, but if you're an um, alternate, you can obviously go to the meetings and participate was my understanding, um, but you can't vote necessarily. Correct. Correct. Okay. Everybody good with these decisions? Any questions? Okay. Um, next on the agenda, is there anyone from the public that would like to speak? It's 719 and a half. Seeing none, I will close public comment at 719 and 45 seconds. Um, we have on the agenda uh, Anthony and I guess it's uh, Andrea or Andrea Sell Sellers a discussion on a proposed promotional event at 90 Main Street. Would you like to give an overview? Sure. Um, we had a request to have a temporary food sales via food truck at 90 Main Street in the area of the uh, Goodfellow Tattoo Club. Um, it's a barbecue and it's going to be for one day it's sort of a, a small block party kind of situation we reviewed the ordinance and while it says that a vendor permits required for um, selling 
items on town sidewalks. This is a one-time situation. We reviewed the vendor ordinance, and it said, and I, the chief of police and I felt that it, that is a situation to say if you're going to have a hot dog stand throughout the summer on the sidewalk, you'd have to come into the council and receive a vendor uh, permit. Where this is a one-time situation, the chief of police can shut down a parking space and let them do that. So there's no action needed by the council. The chief has already approved it, and um, but the the letter was addressed to the council, so we wanted to make sure that the council knew. And is this going to be a one-time thing, or is it, it is? Gonna, okay. If they if they want to if somebody wanted to continue it, they ha then they have to come and get a license from the council. Okay. Any questions or? Are we invited? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Do we need to vote on this? Nope. Deep, or is it it's all set. Pro forma? Done? Yep. Okay. Um, there's no public hearing. Do I have a motion for minutes to uh, accept the 2016 March, excuse me, March 16, 2016 regular meeting minutes? So moved. Any questions, changes? Second. Yeah, second. Oh, I, geez, I'm, it's, been a, it's been a little <laughs> while. Do I have a second? Second. Like, Councilor Pike. Um, any changes, questions? I didn't have any myself, so please call the roll. Councilor Burns. Aye. Councilor Bowden. Aye. Councilor Pike. Aye. Councilor Thompson. Aye. Councilor Weinstein. Aye. Councilor uh, Nazaro. Aye. Councilor Levy. Aye. Motion passes 7-0. That should be an abstention because he wasn't present. No, minutes are not. You are allowed to vote on minutes even if you're not present. There's a, been a law. That somebody actually reviewed practices you can abstain, but you're allowed to vote on them as long as you believe that's a record of what you was there there's no when did that pass it's not there was a somebody brought it up to a, a court saying that they didn't have the right to and I can't remember what town they said no they have a right to vote on it as long as it they believe it is so there's no error in voting on it that's logical well, you said typically yeah. practices we have seen. right well <laughs> can you do that on non-public as well I suppose yes. that would be pretty amazing since there is no record that they would be able to watch, but that's okay. Um, do I have a motion to accept March 16 non public minutes? So moved. Do I have a second? Pick an Amy. <laughs> second. Amy, Amy. Um, any changes, questions? Seeing none, please call the roll. Councilor Burns. Aye. Councilor Bowden. Aye. Councilor Pike. Aye. Councilor Thompson. Aye. Councilor Weinstein. Aye. Councilor Nazaro. Aye. Council Levy. Aye. Motion passes 7-0. Uh, report of the town administrator. Thank you, Mr. Chair. First item I report is earlier this year we solicited proposals to do a complete overhaul and renovation to the two bathrooms in the lower level of this building. Uh, this would have included construction of family disabled bathroom and additional storage space. The proposals came in too high with the lowest at $191,000. So needless to say we didn't do it that way. Uh, but we did need to upgrade the facilities since some of the plumbing was not working. Tiles were coming up off the floor, uh, and some of the sheetrock was just getting um, out of date. So we determined at that point to replace sheetrock, upgrade the plumbing, and replace the tile and hardware. And it could be mainly done in-house with minimal outside contractors. At that point, we estimated we could do it under the, the spending limit that I have of $10,000. However, with any old building, when the sheetrock was removed, we found that it was in worse condition than we believed. Plumbing was leaking, electrical wires were out of date and not secured to anything. It was the old cloth wires back there. Um, and sheetrock was attached to the stone foundation with no insulation. It was determined that it was necessary to fix these issues while the walls were open, since it would just be a matter of time before something failed and we had a larger issue on our hands. I approved this w the work since it was time it was the, of the essence. On the agenda today is a resolution to withdraw up to $33,000 for the building improvement capital reserve funds to cover these repairs. There's no need to suspend the rules and act on it this evening. If the council does not approve it, then we'll have the finding in our operating budget to do these repairs. Um, I can tell you when I went down there, when it was ripped out, it was literally just sheetrock stone. And you could feel the wind coming through, so we did uh, insulate that part. The pipes were leaking behind the walls, so it was needed to get in there and do it. So we have uh, facilities on the lower level. Any questions while we're on this? Actually, yeah, I do. Go ahead. Um, I wasn't sure to bring, if I should bring this up now or when we read the resolution, but would it be possible to get a list of any other projects that we have that's gonna that will come out of that 
fun. Absolutely. Yep. Um, like in the you know whether it's six months or a year. Yep. We can get you that. Thank you. Seeing no more, go ahead, please. The next item is we received our actual rates for health insurance for fiscal year 17. We prepared the budget. We use a guaranteed maximum rate that our health care provider gives us. That rate this year was 6%. The health trust has since set the actual rates. I'm happy to say that our rates were only increasing 0.4% uh, over the previous year. This will result in a savings of $30,212 from what was budgeted. Please be aware that this number is an estimate. Uh, employee changes can impact this figure in the, uh, before June 30th of fiscal year 17, uh, 2017. Uh, the finance director and I are currently reviewing our plans and looking to offer additional plans to comply with the Affordable Care Act. We'll have a proposal before the town council in the coming months and we'll discuss the situation also with our collective buying agreement uh, unit because they'll have to agree to any changes as well. Uh, as many councils know, we're in the process of conducting our first citizen survey. Uh, as of Monday, we've been pleasantly surprised. We've had 379 respondents with a completion rate of 76%. What that means is Sometimes people just don't complete all the questions and they drop off. Or the first question is, are you a resident of Newmarket? And if you say no, you get kicked out. So, um, but we actually were surprised also with the completion rate of 76%. Uh, the electric survey, electronic survey is available at, at on town website uh, from April 1st through May 1st. And we'll present the results to the town council in the late spring. Hard copies for those who may want to fill it out uh, that way are available at the town clerk tax collector's office or in my office and we just turn it back in and we'll enter them in for the data as well. I want to let the council know that we are working on a project with my counterparts in Stratum, Exeter and Durham that we've applied for a master's student fellow uh, through the Municipal Managers Association of New Hampshire. It's the intention of the four communities to use the student to study areas in which the communities can or cannot share services and how to implement them. This individual worked part-time for five months in our communities. Funding is a 50-50 match between the MMA and H in the communities. If successful, it would be about $500 for Newmarket. If the project uh, goes past five months, we'd have the option to continue, but we'd have to pay the individual uh, through the four communities, which we've already uh, discussed and we've agreed to if need be we would do that and I'll keep the council posted on our efforts if we get award, uh, awarded that the next item is not on my written report but I did want to let the council know that we will be ending the trial period of issuing monthly water and sewer bills and return to quarterly billing water and sewer customers will receive monthly uh, bill in M April and May and then we'll begin receiving quarterly bills starting in August of 2016 You'll receive, they'll receive quarterly bills in August, November, February, and May. The reason, as you know, that for issuing the bills was to provide customers with smaller bills and make it easier for them to pay. This would be in line with other service bills such as cable, electricity, and telephone that homeowners pay. We did see an increase in payments, uh, but we received a number of objections I have having to pay monthly. As such, we'll be returning to the quarterly payments. However, in order to address the significant amount of money that is currently passed due, the town will also has also changed its past due collection policy. In the past, town placed liens on properties that had a bill of more than 15 days past due over $50, over $5. While the town may still lien a property, it will be rare and the town will now shut off service to those who do not pay their bills and it is the main means of enforcement. Residents and property owners received notices 14 days prior to shut off. Um, the ordinance is online. Of the, of the procedure, and if there's any other questions, they can contact the New Market Water and Sewer Department. And I have sad news um, that I have to announce the passing of Miss Evelyn LeBranch, the recent recipient of the New Market Boston Post Cane. Miss LeBranch passed away March 5th at the age of 102. She was honored last June as the oldest uh, resident in New Market, and we are searching right now for the a new recipient of the Boston Post Cane. And that's all I have to thank, Mr. Chair. Thank you. <coughs> Our condolences to the council. Um, are there any questions for the administrator? Seeing none, I, I have just one, uh, Steve. Uh, last year, the insurance, uh, they told us it was going to be a 6% increase, right? Mm -hmm. So they came in at basically 40 basis points, right? So that thirty thousand, um, I, I, I think I know the answer. I just want to make sure that's still uh, fungible within the budget, correct? 
Or does that come out? No, that stays in the budget, correct. So if you need, if you wanted to take that money, would it just be taken or would, would the council know or how would that work? If we were to transfer the funds to another department, the council has to approve any transfers between departments. Okay, so uh, it stays where, it, not to cut yeah. it, but it stays where it is correct. until you may need it or bathroom problems or things like that. Right, could if use that at money. the end of the year. The, the big thing is <clears throat> that number for health care fluctuates because of the census that we take. You may have an individual when we start the uh, budget who is receiving a, one, a single plan, but by the end of the next fiscal year may be married with a child, so you have to now find the money in the budget for a family plan. So while we're saying it's a $30,000 savings, usually we see a change in the census that that may be eaten up. Um, but the 6% was predicated on what we have now, correct? Uh, correct. That's the, the, since the health trust knows that uh, municipalities do their budgets in the fall, they come up with an estimate by looking at the figures that they have before they go to their actuaries and come back with the numbers because they want to have more numbers to do it later in the year. Mm -hmm. So they had a 6% figure. They come, they've set the rate in March um, when they have more accurate figures, and that's when it came up to the 0.4% increase. And my last question just on this. Do they do it on, on the actual experience at the town level, or do they do it just based on all municipalities? Both. Um, we're in... Uh, For example, if Newmarket had not one visit to the doctor, would it by definition drop? Not necessarily, because it's also what happens in the pool. Well, that's why I'm saying is yeah. it, it's based on... Both. Okay. Yeah. Our experience and the experience of the pool. Perfect example was a few years back um, during the uh, H1N1 scare. Rates went up because of the fact that everybody was using it. It may not have been new market using it, but other people in the pool were using it because they said if you have uh, symptoms, go to the emergency room. So that spiked the health care costs that year, so you didn't see a drop in the rates. Um, but that it, it doesn't necessarily mean that we had a lot of people going. Okay. Thank you. Next on the agenda, committee reports. Does anyone have a committee report to tell us about? Councillor Thompson. Well, unfortunately, Budget Committee did meet um, last Monday. But unfortunately, I couldn't go. So my report is a whole bunch of not much to find. <laughs> I, I couldn't find that it was online. Um, I did try to. Did you feel it? Okay. Yeah, I watched I, it. <laughs> yeah, I tried it again today and I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't find <laughs> yeah. it. So my apologies. The basic big thing is that Dave False was um, reelected as chair and Dan Smith will be vice chair um, as Mickey Burns stepped down um, or chose not to run or whatever happened. So my apologies that I don't have more than that. Um, maybe, maybe Amy wants to. <laughs> Did it, was there something else that needed uh, to it get was a reported? Pretty quick meeting. Okay. Um, yeah, and that was a lot of what they did was the chair and vice chair, and and Mickey chose not to not to run okay. as one of those spots. So yeah, and hearing things and watching that, yeah, I mean, it was really just organization. So, mm -hmm. but Dave Falls yeah. is continuing as chair, which mm -hmm. is great. That's it. Any other committee? Well, we didn't meet just uh, for the record, but I'm. Um, bringing this up because um, I did receive for the ED, for the uh, economic uh, development committee I received um, the master plan rewrite you know or the excuse me the draft of the new rewrite um, and I'm I don't presume did you get did you get that Councillor Burns so um, uh, maybe Steve can uh, have a hard copy made because I don't think you want to print the whole thing off it, <laughs> it shows the whole uh, uh, zone so to speak mm -hmm. and then it goes over the proposed changes that came from the consultants Quas and um, uh, John Connery it's pretty quick read and I thought it basically captured what we were told by the consultants but I I think you might find that worthwhile great thank you and uh, and hopefully I think uh, we might be meeting within the next 45 days or so mm -hmm. after I spoke to uh, the administrator and maybe we can set up a joint meeting or something to review that so um, that's it no other committee reports on to old business do I have a motion to 
accept resolution 2015-16-36 to purchase a new Ford. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Second. <laughs> Go ahead. Councilor Nazaro, second. Um, does Rick want to give a review, or how do you want to do it, Steve? Sure. Usually, um, tell us about the truck. Rick, Rick won't pass inspection. I can almost do a little of this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm well. Yeah, we had to park it after the snowstorm. Technically, you have 10 days to put your sticker on, but uh, we did park it. Where the problem is, it takes about 10 months to a year to get the new one. By the time they order the chassis and then they build the body and stuff. But um, so we're trying to come up with an inexpensive way to at least keep it on the road. But right now it is off the road. It's uh, typically we were replacing this vehicle back in the day every 10 years. And then we went to 12 and obviously it's an 02. So we're, we're at 14, but uh, we have two one tons. We used to have three. Now we just have the two. It is used for plowing and sanding. It has its own plow route. We're gonna utilize the sander that's with the current vehicle. We would just replace the vehicle in the plow, the front plow, um, and keep the current sander. It would just be piped for the one, so we won't be buying a new sander with it. We kind of rehab the one we have. It has a stainless uh, tub in it, so we just had to put a new chain and spin a motor in it, and we kind of re auto excellence rebuilt it. So um, that saved us a lot of money because they're they're about ten thousand dollars. But uh, it is a primary piece of equipment in the fleet, utilized year-round by uh, the department, and uh, we really do need it. But uh, uh, just procedurally, um, the purchasing ordinance for the town allows to that if we receive the state bid price, that you don't need to receive three quotes because the state does the bidding for us. So that's why there's only one on this one. And I also always shop around just to see, and, and you can never touch it. It's always a great number. Um, I always do try to see, and uh, nobody could come close to the state bid numbers for the vehicle. So, so it's one's forty-four thousand, and then twenty-seven is. Yeah, we buy the chassis body. from a Ford dealership, and then we get the body from another company, and then they mount it on the truck with the plow. Any questions? Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. I apologize. Councillor Pike and then Thompson. Thank you. Yeah, I think the only question I have is, uh, I mean, it seems clear that the, the, the truck is needed. Uh, there's a significant amount of um, main, uh, repairs in the last, last year or two. So um, I, th I think the question is, if you were looking forward, do you think in the future you need to go back to a more frequent uh, cycle or do you think the vehicles will last longer in the future it's it you know I just was sort of looking retroactively at that 12 grand yeah it, it, that's an excellent question which there's another resolution tonight that kind of came, comes up and that follows that um, we probably should go back to just replacing it at 12 because you try to get more out of it and it just it doesn't work out at the end, you know, by the time it, it's, there's a reason we were doing those things. And I think it was a good practice to be totally honest. You know, we went from the 10 to 12 and I think that's, that's reasonable, but to try to go past that, that you really, especially in like this type of a vehicle, it, it starts to hit you pretty hard. Um, so okay. it, it breaks down a lot and it's hard to keep it on the road and so forth. So. I must have been from before. Okay. So I'm good. Thank you. Uh -huh. Any other questions? I was just going to ask very briefly, um, the truck, obviously, the body has failed, not the engine per se, right, Rick? That's Sorry? What, is it mostly the body? I mean, it says here the vehicle will need a lot of repairs, body work, et cetera. Is the engine in pretty good shape? The engine for a diesel is in pretty good shape, but then the springs, there's some oil leaks, whether to separate that and replace the seals, that's a big, you almost have to pull the motor. It's a big expensive job. The only reason I asked is because it seems like a lot of our vehicles have low mileage, but they rust out just because of 10, 12 years old and they're out, you know, doing what they do. 
and I didn't know if there was any value in the motors because 70,000 on a diesel is not a lot of miles. Is there any value in that in the secondary market? That's, that was kind of my question. I mean, I mean, it, it probably would run another 100,000 miles easy, wouldn't it? Well, if you made some kind of truck, but like the frames, like you'd have to put a new frame under the truck to, to do that. So it'd be cheaper for someone to pay $1,000 for the motor and plop it in another another chassis. That's what I meant. You know, know what I mean? Sell the motor. That's yeah. what you're to, to clarify, they're not accepting this as a trade-in, correct? No. So we'll be selling this as surplus property as soon as the new vehicle comes in. So we'll try to get some money from it that it way. It just seemed to me that the motors usually are okay. It's, I mean, they may need, you know, gaskets and whatnot, but the, the vehicles are what, what fall apart right. from the run, from all the salt. So, uh, seeing no other questions, please call the roll. Councilor Burns. Aye. Councilor Bowden. Aye. Councilor Pike. Aye. Councilor Thompson. Aye. Councilor Weinstein. Aye. Councilor Nazaro. Aye. Councilor Levy. Aye. Motion passes 7-0. Can have a motion to accept resolution 2015-16-37 regarding a Ford F-550 4x4 Type 1 ambulance. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Ask the fire chief to discuss um, this one. I'll let him, I'll let, I'll let him continue. <laughs> Maybe we can put that engine in the ambulance. And yeah. Bounce on down the road. <laughs> so I'll just kind of spin off of Dale's comment, I mean, Councillor Pike's comment. The uh, the ambulances, we we faithfully replaced them at 10 years. So at nine years, I would have came to you, because it takes a year for them to build them, basically. You don't see it for you. They, they tell you 10 months, but it's always a year. Um, they lie. But anyway, <laughs> the, uh, so we used to do that. So I was like, oh, we'll get a couple more. Let's try to go 12 years. Well. It's been towed from the hospital twice back to Newmark. Yeah. yeah. Which is All done. As long as it wasn't towed to the hospital. <laughs> we did get the patient there. We got the patient there to the hospital. We just didn't dare drive it home. Um, it's been out of service a lot. Of course, every yeah. time it's out of service, that's when you get the dual call. You can't cover the second call. You're losing revenues. Um, there's a reason we were going 10 years, and then you'll see the maintenance costs also. Um, and I know the mileage is down. And what we do do with the ambulances is we alternate them every week. We go primary to secondary. So we don't keep one ambulance always being first due. Um, so it helps. It helps where we have to keep the mileage down a little bit. But they idle. They run all the time. We overload them with all kinds of equipment. And it's the idling more so than anything. Um, this ambulance has been eating turbos like you know, I eat a cupcake, but uh, <laughs> they uh, killing it, Rick. Those are an expensive line item, but uh, you're on a roll tonight. <laughs> I am <huh? laughs> on a cupcake. But no, but so we there's no state bid here, so we went out and we got proposals. Um, we got three cheap ones, and the one thing was uh, the the radios is a separate line item from a different company that is state bid. Uh, the ambulance radios we've been turning them over from the old to the new. This, the ones that's in there now is almost 20 years old, no more buying parts. Um, so we're putting in to update the radios with this purchase also through uh, two-way communications, state bid. Um, but the ambulance, this ambulance, we're going up to a 550. Our others were 450s. And basically what happens is with these, when you put all your equipment on them and everything, they're basically already overloaded for what they're rated for. And so that's going to get away from this. This is more of a truck type instead of the van type. It'll have the nose like a pickup on the front of it. Um, same size. Everyone will be able to drive it the same. But it's a little ruggeder. <clears throat> and it's also four-wheel drive, so it'll get around better in the snow versus the vans. Uh, they're not the greatest in the snow. But uh, this comes out of the ambulance revolving fund also. So it's from all the revenues. Um, it, we took this out of the CIP years ago. This will be our second ambulance we're purchasing, I believe, through this process. But uh, it'll deplete the fund down to about 26000 In July, Forty five will go in. We won't really be writing a check for this until it comes in, which is going to be basically a year from now. So we're going to be looking at this ambulance for like another year. It's out of service quite frequently, and um, we should keep them for 10 years. and. At the ninth year, I should be coming up here and giving this speech instead of trying to hang on to it because uh, 
There's nothing more embarrassing than having a tow truck back up to the ER to grab the ambulance. <laughs> Uh, Council Weinstein, but I w do you have something? Yeah, to I just want to clarify the the funding of it. The the town set up the ambulance revolving fund that all revenues from the ambulance calls goes into this fund, and the purpose is exactly this: to pay, purchase ambulances and equipment. Um, yes, it's going to deplete it. However, by the time we need to replace the other ambulance, it'll be replenished, and you'll re uh, deplete it again. There'll be enough funds in there to mm -hmm. um, any if the emergency comes up to do some work. This is different from you'll have the fire, we'll be discuss, discussing later the fire capital improvement fund. That is through tax dollars. Um, so this is just purely from the revenues from ambulance calls. Councilor Weinstein. I have a couple of questions. So we have two ambulances. We do. Total. Um, how old is the other one? It's an 09. Okay. It's and an then, 09. Um, and that's in decent shape? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And what are we going to do? What are you going to do for the next year? With this other we're gonna, uh, well, <laughs> at, we are actually what away. we've been doing is making the 09 more primary than this one. Get we haven't been alternating quite as frequently because it's typically a lot of times it's out of service, but it's it's not a huge dollar amount thing, but it's out of service. And what happens when that happens? And we get we're we're extremely busy. The fire department is out of control right now since the first of the year we typically do like 80 calls you'll see in my reports if you look back mm -hmm. we do like 80 to 86 calls a month this past month I think we did 122 I mean it's just not just a couple more it's it's yeah. really really extremely busy so we're gonna have to stop alternating till we get the new one you know we're still we'll still do it when we have faith but <laughs> the faith for this one is it's just not reliable. Uh, a lot of little things, but it, it, when it's an ambulance, you have to take it out of service, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And then when you get the dual call, you can't cover your call, so now you're losing revenues because you can't. Someone else is picking up your medical call. And as you know, the ambulance does very well mm -hmm. on the revenue side. So. But you feel like you can limp along for the yeah. We're, I mean, we're, we have a choice, we've but. we've altered our operations to make it work, but. A, the 09 is going to be more primary right now, and this is going to be more backup because it's not reliable. Thanks, Rick. Councilor Nazaro and then Thompson. Um, just a couple quick things. Obviously, well, not obviously, but I am supportive of this. Um, one is the time factor. Just, I mean, when we only have one ambulance, then we have to go to mutual aid to another community to come to our community, correct? Yeah. So you have two things going on at once. Now we're waiting for something to come from Durham or somewhere near else. And we do still respond with crews, and we have some equipment. Yep. We just can't do the transport. Can't transport. So. And there's the revenue side. So there's the like, concern for the community side. And there's the revenue side around mm -hmm. the fact that this is making money, right? This mm -hmm. is The money you're making from the ambulance is paying for this, Yeah. Right? which is yeah. amazing. Um, and I think the final part of it is I actually had the opportunity to go see this ambulance, and I would highly encourage that the council pass this. I think it is well overdue. Thanks. Good. Councilor Thompson? I just wanted to say I wholeheartedly support this. Um, that is why funds are in capital reserve funds, regardless of whether it comes from taxpayer funds or from the ambulance revenue. That's what we have the money here for. Um, so I know there's been a concern about, oh, we're depleting it, but that's why it's there. Mm -hmm. And this needs to get spent. And if there's anything that you can do, I trust that you will, as far as seeing if you can get it even faster. Yeah, I, I've been, you know, obviously. I didn't want to do that before I had your blessing, right. but that, that is a, that right. is a No, I'm sure you'll be on that. So I, I have no problem with that. That's exactly where the funds are there, and that's what we need in the community, so. And what we're putting in there is working out great, the, the 45, basically, because the way the rotation works and we can only <clears throat> buy specific items I can't buy fire gear it's just the ambulance or medical stuff like the the, uh, the life packs and uh, the ADs and stuff and the ambulances in the stretchers it's working out we're able to sustain we might deplete it down to 25 30,000 but we still have a little cushion and we're not you know we don't need to continue to add more funds to it mm -hmm. upping the 45 is what I mean by that statement um, so I appreciate the support, and like I said, I wasn't trying to be irresponsible. I was trying to push it out a little, and it was, and then it just, and it happened. Like when it happened, it happened. Yeah, no, oh, that's fine. Just trying to do the right thing, and uh, it's probably ten years is the right thing to do. I guess is what I'm telling you. All said. Yes. 
Um, just one question. Everybody else says, oh, I'm sorry, Councilor Pike. Uh, well, the only question I had is looking again, not so much about this purchase, but the next one. You have a 2009 now. So the, the next two ambulance purchases, if you did, if you purchased one, are you thinking 2019 or 2020 for the next? It would be, it would be 2020. Okay. Essentially. I would come in and ask. In 19. In 19, because mm -hmm. it, like I said, it, they tell you 10 months, but it's a year. And Realistically, you, it's you expect the funds to be there at that yeah. time. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that's yeah. really all the yep. question is. So it's going to be uh, like uh, on a six to four year type of thing. Like type that. of yeah. Okay, thanks. Rick, just a question on the trade. The one we're buying was not with the trade in, or or was it? The, yeah, the guy. They lowballed you on the trade. So they you, did. So you we're went, gonna. You went with the other company. We'll correct? sell. Someone will make it a parts truck or. So do you? Know. That was my question. Do you have any idea what what you think you'll get out of this ambulance? And if you if you're gonna really get. Realistically, I feel like we should get ten thousand dollars for the for the vehicle if we sell it. Like even if we do seal bids, say minimum bid, boom, put it on display down there. People can come look at it um, instead of sending it to the auction because at the auction sometimes they all work together. Well, I was going to say, if you're going to get lowballed, is there any benefit to having the parts? Just a question. Mm -mm. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just asking. I'd rather it be someone else's headache. Okay. Mm -hmm. I yeah. just honest with you. Because they, you know, three grand, you know. Yeah. Well, um, we'll get. I'm, I'm get telling to, you, you that we should get ten grand you, for you, it. You know yeah. what I mean? Maybe even more. I'm just yeah. saying we should do a minimum bid. I was just looking what they offered you, which was three. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is, if you know, when we, when you're going to get a new one, I think it's fine. I think you should come in, you know, the, you know, in 2019, 20, whatever it is. And at that point, it would make sense to evaluate, you know, obviously the condition it's in, because for all you know, maybe it'll get you more life. You don't know. So, I mean, it makes sense to come in every 10 years, but obviously, it would make make sense to know what kind of conditions the the, the uh, ambulance is in or any vehicle. Um, for that matter so that was my two cents um, by the way these also do other towns is that accurate we we do now is there a priority for new market over other town how do you jockey that in other words you know if you get a call if you have an ambulance that's sort of limping along you know because now you're kind of down to one and one that obviously needs repair and do you is there any kind of prioritization for that or do you just go by calls if it's in service it goes on a call if someone requests it it goes on a call are the rates commensurate between um a new market call and an out of town call is it done by mileage time how's that it's what all you base the, that on? the nice thing about that when we go mutual aid for medicals if someone doesn't pay that community pays so it's a guaranteed revenue versus the potential for maybe a write-off, per se. Okay. But you my know. question was, are the rates the same charge? Whether yeah, it's the rates the same. You know, the mileage might be a little more. Okay, so that's what I asked. That's what I meant. Is it based on time and mileage? It's when you everything's come up with that based rate? on mileage in a set fee based on the type of call. Whether it's an ALS call, BLS call, there's different rates. Okay. The mileage would be key. Okay, thank you. Seeing no other questions, please call the roll. Councilor Burns. Aye. Councilor Bowden. Aye. Councilor Pike. Aye. Councilor Thompson. Aye. Councilor Weinstein. Aye. Councilor Nazaro. Aye. Councilor Levy. Aye. Motion passes 7 0. Thank you. And uh, we have a resolution to have a motion to accept 2015 16 38 relating to a lease purchase of 24 Scott ear packs. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. You want to do the air packs, Mr. Yes. Um, so on the air packs. Pickup truck, now on the air packs. <laughs> I achieved, so. Yep. I don't have to change my hat. No. <laughs> um, You're going to have to get, like, multiple uniforms. <laughs> yeah. Around, like, come down a bat Go bat change pole. my shirt, come back in. Um, <laughs> so we, we've had them in the CIP now for a couple of years. We knew this was kind of coming. The, the air packs have to be flow tested every year. And... You can only do that so many times, and then they say, that's it. They're no more, no good. Um, in 2013, the NFPA, which is like the Bible for a fire service, as far as when we keep our gear and when we have to get rid of it, air packs, they made some changes to the air packs. 
there were three key changes. Uh, the low air alarm used to ring at 25%, and now it's 33%. Um, the mask, they had to change the integrity because they were melting on people. So they're much more uh, less likely to melt to your face and, oh, yeah. That's nice. and affect your seal. Um, the other thing was the pass alarms are all the same. And when we talk in them, in the older ones, when you try to talk on the radio, it, you, it's all jibber you, It's You basically don't know what someone's trying to tell you. The new ones now, it muffles out all that, the nozzle spray noise and the banging and clanging, so you can hear what someone's trying to tell you inside the building. Um, so there's this new rule that went into effect in 2013. Pretty much everyone around us has updated their air packs. We're one of the last. Greenland's in the process, just like we are, of updating theirs right now. Uh, Newfields has, Durham has, Portsmouth has, Exeter has. Um, I don't believe Stratum's done it yet. I tried to check with him and he didn't call me back. But uh, there's a new standard as far as what your air pack has to do, and those were the key elements that I just spoke to. Our packs don't meet that. In May of 17, our packs, we can't put them on our backs anymore. It's, they're done. So nothing's going to change budget-wise between now and then. Um, we'll put another 50, I think, into the capital reserve. So we, we purchased the ones we have now in 02. We did a lease purchase, five-year lease purchase, because they're expensive. Um, and that's what we're proposing to do again so we don't deplete the CIP account. Um, the interest rates are pretty low, and it's pretty much what all the communities have been doing because they're so expensive. Um, you typically get about 15 years out of your air packs, typically. They always make a change at some point, um, but these were really big changes, uh, the, the low air. Also, the regulators, when you look at it, they used to be up here, you put a mask on you. So, there's, there's a lot of safety concerns as to why they did that. The other thing that's changed is we have 20 air packs. Um, every riding seat now has to have an air pack, even the driver of the apparatus. That was something back in the day that wasn't a requirement. So now even the pump operator has to have a pack. He might not be going inside, but he has to have an air pack. So we have to go from 20 to 24 packs to, to meet that regulation. Um, so essentially, it takes a little time for these to come in too. Probably less than six months is what they're telling me. But everyone's updating because of this 2013 rule change. So it may take a little bit longer. We're okay until May of 17 with ours. But we definitely can't go beyond that. So I would like to do it now just because everyone's trying to update and I don't want to be, uh-oh, now we're in trouble, like kind of what could be potentially happen. Um, so that's why this is kind of coming up now because uh, the rule change and um, to make sure we get them in time and we're not because in in 17 we cannot put them on there's no oh you, you can you keep them six extra months you can't they will not float test them and that's an annual test that has to be done but you can only do it so many times and then they don't they just don't let you do it everything with firefighting has an expiration date eventually they they just that's how it how it rolls so uh, okay so, councillor thompson a couple of questions um we own these at the end right yes okay yep. so it's a lease to own or a, in a, a matter like like a car loan or something like that we're financing it right why do we i guess that maybe answers the own question why do we lease versus buy outright and let me tie into that because it may fall into um, we do have a really good interest rate of 2.79 I get that but versus paying cash for them how much do we earn in the town accounts for interest and what's the what's the Delta Steve we're not getting 2.79 it, it's it's minimal right now for our interest on the capital reserve I think nothing um, the reason well, in that to me sorry I'm gonna interrupt yeah. again that to me would say okay look if we were earning more interest in that then I, I would finance but if we're not earning much on interest in the town accounts why are we paying 2.79 in the, the reason is we this is a fund where we do need to keep money in there for if a we had a catastrophic failure of the fire truck this is where we would go to to fix it um, I do not feel comfortable withdrawing and depleting it by withdrawing the entire two, 213 940 to replace them and I I requested that the fire chief look for 
leasing and the finance director look for leasing options. And, it, and it's great rate, but do you understand yeah. what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, no, I completely understand. And I, and I don't, I would prefer not to either, but with this fund and the situation we're in, I would rec I have to recommend that we lease them so we don't deplete the capital reserve fund. Uh, one problem with a pump on a, a hose pump on a fire truck or an engine that could be in the hundred thousand dollar range in and something that we could not finance at all I'm sorry what do you mean if by that finance? were to happen could we get financing at that usually point? not right okay all right thank you Councillor Pike yeah it was a related question but it just I, I noticed there was a three year there is same, is it the same thing? You're just more comfortable with the five than the three, or yeah? It, the the difference is the total cost at the end of five is going to be two hundred thirty-two thousand, um, and the end of three is two hundred twenty-five thousand. Um, so there's a, a little savings by going to three. It's just it's it's a as we said it's a much larger number for the withdrawal, but what we're replenishing it with annually we have been, it's more palatable to do the the smaller amount. Uh. Is that okay, Councillor Pike? Did that get you where you wanted to go? Yeah, no, I mean, I. It's it's just I guess it's a fact of where we are because I think if you look across our accounts, we we have lots of balances that are sort of rotating without a lot, and yet we have something here where we could save quite a bit. I guess that's just because the uh, you know it's it's not that easy to transfer money around your accounts, but it seems unfortunate that we have to. Uh, carry so much surplus when we when there's no interest rate to speak of uh, on those amounts and this is than us 20 grand more yeah. pretty soon they might be charging them. yeah um, so I had a related question um, so because it maybe I missed it but what would we be paying if it was cash what's yeah 213 940 okay so with the interest we're paying how much more the, the two thirty. I'm sorry. One second. About twenty. Oh, it's twenty grand. About that. Yeah, two thirty-two. So, because <clears throat> it was bugging me as well, you know, is there any? Maybe you can't take it from another fund. I get that, um, but you could, if we had something, as you said, catastrophic. You'd still be left with. Um, Roughly a hundred grand, give or take, right? Mm -hmm. um, is it something that? I mean, I just hate taking twenty thousand dollars and paying it for a five-year lease mm -hmm. if if we absolutely don't need it. Is it, you know, could you find that money in the general fund or something else? I mean, are you really? I mean, if you're that concerned, yeah. It, I mean, could we shorten it to the three at least? And if the council wants to shorten the three, that's doable. I mean, we we have that. Because then you could plan for that a yep. little better. And that's, what's that going to say? I didn't. That's do um. Enough. What's that going to say? That's two hundred twenty-five thousand for the three year, so it's about seven. Yeah. You know, it takes seven grand. I mean, if that and it, and it doesn't put pressure on on you, because we could plan at that point because yep. we'd go into another budget season, right? Does the council feel comfortable with that, or I think we'd find the money if we needed it. We're, not, we're 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 funding conservatively overall across the budget. We're not. It's not like we're trying to stretch things. So I think in this case, it's it seems a shame where it's going to cost us eight to twenty grand that we can't do something. It's kind about. of making me a little, you know, and I not sick enough to need an ambulance, but kind of bumming me out. Procedurally, <laughs> procedurally, can I? I request that a motion be made to uh, amend this resolution to a three-year lease uh, payment with a 2.74 percent interest rate with an annual payment with a w and withdrawal from the capital reserve fund of seventy five thousand two hundred fifty six dollars and fifty one cents you know formal motion for that amendment yeah we need I an amendment. so moved second you may want to get that yeah too. we will okay so now it's a three year instead of a five. We save seven grand, so that's something. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I think we're all fairly comfortable. Oh, okay. Just sorry, before I vote on it, you and Rick are totally confident with that. Yeah, I'll take. It. I'm okay. 
you know, I think we'll be able to deal with it in the next budget cycle if something came up yeah. in any case. What I'll do is I'll make sure we budget okay. minimally for the contribution of the capital reserve fund, the lease payment. So there'll always be something going into the... Which is an increase of 50, or 25 we're we'll putting there right Correct. now. Correct. Is everybody okay with this? We just got to remember that yeah. come budget season. Yep. <laughs> okay. I'll remind you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is on the amendment. Yeah. Please call the roll on the amendment to three from five to three. Councilor Burns. Aye. Councilor Bowden. Aye. Councilor Pike. Aye. Councilor Thompson. Aye. Councilor Weinstein. Aye. Councilor Nazaro. Aye. Councilor Levy. Aye. Motion passes seven zero. Now we do you have to call the roll on the yep. resolution then? Okay, go ahead. Councilor Burns. Aye. Councilor Bowden. Aye. Councilor Pike. Aye. Councilor Thompson. Aye. Councilor Weinstein. Aye. Councilor Nazaro. Aye. Councilor Levy. Aye. Motion passes 7 0. Well, we saved something. So it's not a bad thing. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Very welcome. Thanks, Rick. And seeing no old, I don't think there's any more old business, there's no third readings, we will go into new business. So bear with me and I will get there. Okay. I'll help you out. I'll, I'll propose yeah, a motion. Yeah, you want to do for, the one for Rochelle? Uh, Rochelle Sharples to the Veterans Memorial Trust Committee for a three year term to expire March 2019. A second. <clears throat> Any comments, questions? Do you want just, to I'll say just because I'm chair of that committee yeah. that she's uh, she's been secretary and treasurer for years now and does just a great job at it. Very committed mm -hmm. to our veterans. Mm -hmm. She is very committed. Absolutely. The veterans. Um, please call the roll. Councilor Burns. Aye. Councilor Bowden. Aye. Councilor Pike. Aye. Councilor Thompson. Absolutely. Councilor Weinstein. Aye. Councilor Nazaro. Aye. Councilor Levy. Aye. Motion passes 7 0. And resolutions in the first reading. We have, I believe, two. Resolution 2015 16 39, the purchase of a Ford police cruiser for the police department to include costs associated with replacement of emergency lighting, equipment setup and to withdraw said funds from the Public Safety Services Revolving Fund. Whereas the Police Department <coughs> seeks to replace a 2010 patrol car with a new police cruiser at the state bid price of $28,349 in, whereas the installation of lights, sirens, radios, computers, and other necessary equipment will be undertaken at a cost not to exceed $17,031 and the cost of lettering and decals is $500 and Whereas the police detail revolving fund currently has a balance of $81,486 and now therefore be it resolved that the New Market Town Council does hereby authorize the town administrator to purchase a new black and white Ford police cruiser and related costs associated with transfer and installation of equipment and lettering at a price not to exceed $45,880 and further approves the withdrawal of said costs from the public safety services revolving fund. And that will be addressed at the next meeting. And the last resolution is 2015-16-40. Resolution relating to town hall first floor bathroom. Mm. Whereas the town hall's first floor bathrooms are in dire need of renovation, and whereas the proposed cost of the renovation is $45,000, and whereas the Building Improvements Capital Reserve Fund has a balance of 273649 as of February 29-16, now, therefore, be it resolved that the New Market Town Council does hereby authorize withdrawal of, by the way, there's a typo there, Steve, yep. of an amount not to exceed 45000 and to authorize the town administrator to enter into construction contracts related to this project. And as they say, dib dib that's all for old business <coughs> and new business. Um, is there any correspondence from the, to the town council? Any closing comments? Any councillors? Councillor Weinstein? Oh, I just wanted to say that the Sunrise Sunset Center is hosting their yard sale on Saturday from 8 to 2. And um, people have brought items there, and people have rented tables. I have a table. So come on down. It's going to be inside and support the Senior Center. Very good. Any other closing comments? It's actually, I probably should have asked her in the administrative report, but how is spring cleanup? Good. It's uh, wrapping up on Saturday is the last day to bring materials to the transfer station. This is, again, we, did, we didn't do like the old fashioned, everybody Shop bring day. everything out. 
um, it's if you're over the age of 62, they were able to um, request for a pickup. That is over. So now it's <coughs> if you need to get rid of something, you have to bring it to the transfer station. That's Saturday. Saturday. Just so everyone at home knows. Yes. And I just have. Yeah. I just have one regarding um, um, DPW. Uh, um, as I mentioned a little bit earlier to Rick, uh, um, there was a tree um, very close to some wires, and um, Jerry Hamill was driving by and was nice enough to uh, um, bring that to the DP, uh, DPW people, and uh, they uh, had that tree removed the next day, and it was a, a very nice thing to do and uh, proper safety for the road. So thank you to D DPW. And... Uh, other than that, thank you for your confidence. And again, I'd like to thank Councilor Nazaras for a very classy thing he did tonight. So, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? We are adjourned.